the AI hype is starting to crack. And the latest Databrick State of AI report actually reveals the cracks that you need to watch out for. You're gonna have to read between the lines and you need to understand how to read this type of report because as you can imagine, right, every report that's put out there by any company is gonna be biased towards their solutions. And it's normal because in the end, it's a marketing material, but nevertheless, right, all of these reports are great because you can see exactly what they focus on, what matters to them, and what things are left unsaid. If you're excited about the rapid advancements in AI and the push for AI and machine learning operations, then you're not alone, believe me, because I love that companies are pushing to get more models into production, but there's a hidden side to the story. And that is that AI is, let's say it's transforming industries, right? But as more companies get to discuss AI use cases, some are finding the reality doesn't always match the hype. Because there's one thing that, regardless of the hype, right? There's one thing that matters most to any company. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. To give you some context, right? I'm a solutions architect, I'm a consultant, right? And I'm also a Databricks partner, solutions architect champion, and I'm also an Azure AA engineer. I've led the development of multiple AI solutions for multiple clients ever since the AI revolution started. And I have firsthand experience in what challenges many clients actually face. So you can be certain that I know what I'm talking about and everything that I talk about on this channel comes from my personal experience of more than 17 years in tech. Having said this, hit the like button please and subscribe to my channel so that more people get to see this. And this way you can also support my efforts and the time that I spend creating these videos. I really appreciate any like and any share and that's of course if you find this video useful. Okay, so in this video I'm going to walk you through the most critical findings from this report and I'm also going to highlight both the advantages of the current AI landscape and also the potential challenges. First, the report reveals that companies are becoming three times more efficient at deploying AI models. They have this ratio of experiments logged to models registered. And that shows the 134% growth in the number of logged experiments and the 1000% growth in the number of registered models. First, let's define what these are so we can better understand these stats. Experiments logged, okay? This metric actually shows the number of AI models being tested in a company. And listen, when I say AI, you can understand both AI, machine learning, and deep learning, and large language models. And I'm gonna use AI as a catch-all for all of these four because everybody's doing this nowadays. At least we have a shared term and the downsides we can address them later. Logging an experiment is a part of the initial phase of the machine learning life cycle. And this is where different algorithms are tested and the hyperparameters are tuned in order to improve performance. Models registered, on the other hand, they indicate the transition from experimentation to production, at least on paper, right? And we're gonna talk about that in a bit because once a model is registered, it's typically considered to be ready for deployment. The ratio of experiments logged to models registered improved from 16 to one in February, 2023 to five to one by March, 2024, meaning that companies are becoming three times more efficient in moving from experimentation to production. Again, that's on paper because you can see how the phrasing is made, right? So it looks very, very good to everybody that reads, but why am I saying on paper? The reason why I'm saying on paper is because the model registrations metric, while it shows the number of models that are considered production ready, is not a real indicator of actual deployment. And here are the reasons for it. Registration does not equal deployment. To be fair, registration is just a formality. This is a necessary step to serve a model using model serving or ML flow. So models need to be registered in the model registry in order to be served. And this way you can track different versions of the model. Then you can manage stage transitions, like for example, moving from staging to production. And you can also make sure that the correct version of the model is being served in production. Once the model is registered, it can then be deployed and then it can be used for real time or for batch inference. So even after registration, there can be significant delays before a model is fully integrated into production because it's still a needed step, but it's still an intermediary step towards production. Another reason why model registrations sound great on paper, but the reality can be different, is that some companies, right, they register multiple versions of a model, but then only one of these models may be actually used and deployed. So without meaning to, right, they actually inflate the registration numbers without that reflecting into true machine learning deployments. 
and you end up with multiple registered models that never get deployed due to various reasons. I mean, usually shifts in strategy or projects being canceled. And listen, I'm assuming that the report includes these models in the metric, so it can be a little bit inflated, but in the end, that's just my opinion. What do you think? Now that the ratio can be a little bit optimistic, right? But I still think it's relevant because it still shows growth. And let's say that companies aren't becoming three times more efficient, but at least twice as efficient, you know, when it comes from moving from experimentation to production. And it's still a great number. Maybe not three times, but twice. And it's still a great number. But does efficiency actually translate to revenue growth? I mean, registration metrics don't provide information of how extensively a model is used once it's deployed. And they don't provide information on the impact that it has on business outcomes. A model could be registered, right? And it can be deployed, but if it's not used, or if it doesn't contribute significantly to decision-making processes, then its registration may not reflect actual value. What I would have liked to see in this part of the report was model serving statistics, actually, because model serving would have been great because it's a real measure of moving AI to production. And this is the first reason why I said there's a crack in the AI hype. Because registering a model doesn't always mean it's deployed effectively, right? Because many models that get registered never make it to full deployment or even fail to deliver on the expectations, you know, from a business perspective. Like model registrations is just an experimentation phase that is registered until it actually gets deployed. And only then, only then, right, it can generate value to clients. So by considering this as the top metric for A to production, I think it can show some cracks in the hype because if the numbers were as good for model serving, I believe they would have put those in the report. And that's exactly what you need to pay attention to. Don't let the excitement of cloud AI solutions affect your judgment of what really, really matters. Because more than efficiency, what matters is the effectiveness and the return on investment. And you can also make money with AI, right? And you can make money or reduce costs with AI. If you don't do either of these, then you're just burning resources. And I see a lot of companies that reduced their workforce, but at the same time, what they're doing, they're increasing their cloud costs. And this is an interesting shift that we're gonna see how it's gonna evolve, whether they're gonna have the same increase in ROI over the long run, or they're gonna just reduce cloud costs and start hiring more and more in order to create on-prem solutions. In the end, the future will tell us what's gonna happen. But listen, before we go to the next part, if you're finding this information valuable, make sure that you hit the subscribe button because I try to give you a balanced insight, you know, on AI and on cloud engineering because I'm trying to do this as often as I can. You know, sometimes, you know, work gets in the way, but every time that I have something to say, I create these videos because I want to help you. Also, if you're looking for an AI job, getting AI certified is a great way to signal to employers that you're familiar with cloud AI services. At getthatbadge.com, we offer practice exams to help you prepare for AI engineer certification exams. We currently have both Azure and Databricks practice exams, and we're adding more every week. So definitely check it out because if you're looking for a way to support this channel, this is a way. You both support Decision Forest and you support yourself by learning a new skill. Now let's talk about another important part of the report and that's related to open source models. Because ever since the AI hype got started, Databricks actually pushed for open source models and they made huge bets on open source being the future in AI development. And I completely support this view and I also hope that open source is going to continue to grow when it comes to AI development. But this is important, right? Because you gotta look also at the proprietary versus open source debate from multiple angles, okay? Because one angle that many people are not talking about is money. We have the random developer, okay? And then we have the companies that make money from compute costs. And then we get companies that make money from API costs. Now the companies that make money from compute costs, they love open source because they make money on compute and they don't care about the end use case. The companies that make money from API costs have their own proprietary models and they also push those, okay? So again, for the client's use case, they don't really care about it because it's not relevant to them as long as they get those API requests gains. But you, as a developer, you can make money with both and you can help your end client. You can benefit from the open source, for example, if you get hired to fine tune a model, and you can also benefit from proprietary models if you become an expert in those particular ones and then you get hired to use those. Because as a developer, from a money perspective, you should never ever have a bias towards either and always look out for your client's best interest. 
And to be fair, right? Like many clients have no idea what they want. All of them, they think they want chatbots because it looks like long hanging fruit for them, but it's not really like that, you know? Because what is the use case? Why a chatbot? Many have no idea why they want a chatbot. And that's exactly where a developer comes in saving the day. Now the report also highlights the growing trend of companies that are opting for open source models, okay? Particularly when it comes to large language models like Llama and Mistral. Now here's their chart with open source LLM adoption and that focuses on both Llama and on Mistral. We can see how Llama 3 became very, very popular and that shows that the market is reacting very fast to AI advancements, but that also shows experimentation more than production because you wouldn't flip so much between the models if you had something already in production. It would introduce too much uncertainty for a production system. So let's look at some disadvantages and some advantages of open source. Now, the biggest advantages of using open source models is our ability to customize them you know, for specific use cases. You can fine tune these models for better suiting your custom needs and they can also be more effective, you know, they can be more cost effective than proprietary models. And since these models are free, companies can avoid the licensing fees. But on the other hand, they need proper resources and proper expertise so that they can be optimized. Out of the box, these open source models will not perform as well as proprietary models. So there's the cost of training these models in order to fine tune them and so on. And for Databricks, all of these costs that a client faces are actually called revenue because the client spins up compute in order to train these models. So the more training and the more fine tuning, the more revenue. So the clients need to take that into consideration and get a balanced view between choosing open source models versus proprietary models because both are costly for clients. So you cannot really say that one or the other is best for any use case, but you have to run those costs in terms of how much it actually costs to fine tune a model versus the number of API calls in production. I mostly work with proprietary models because this way you can estimate costs better and you can also get a clear performance straight out of the box. But that's just my preference and I'm curious what do you prefer? Maybe you got some cost savings after training your own custom LLM. I mean, what results did you get and how was your experience deploying both? Another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to this report is unified data governance because in an AI world, data governance is key. And as the report shows in various sections, you know, financial services and healthcare, even if they're highly regulated, they're still exploring generative AI and they're the most profitable industry. So having proper data governance in place is actually crucial because without it, generative AI solutions would never be implementable. You would never get past regulatory needs. And on page 31 of this report, you can actually see the adoption of Unity Catalog. And this is the highest, right, for these industries. And because Databricks will push more for data governance, I believe that these two industries are going to be very well positioned to deploy generative AI use cases. They also have a lot of capital to deploy, so they can experiment a bit this year. And hopefully next year, they're going to get more models into production. Now, having all of these in mind, why is the AI hype starting to crack? Because all of the charts show great adoption and greater experimentation. They all go up, right? But what we're not seeing anywhere is the return on investment from a client's perspective, because it all comes down to return on investment. And this report is focused on adoption and growth in terms of usage. But I would like to see reports that show not only greater usage, but ROI metrics. Now, cloud services providers, they don't know how their clients are doing, but I think a good metric would be model serving metrics. And since companies that provide AI cloud services, they don't really show that. I'm a little bit skeptical. I mean, listen, to be fair, they don't care if the client's use cases are relevant or not, or if they are generating revenue or saving costs for their clients. You know, I think their clients need to have greater use cases in the first place, but I'm looking forward to reports from companies that use AI and that show ROI metrics around that usage. That's it from me, guys. I mean, let me know if you found reports that show this because I would love to read them. Also like and subscribe, get cloud certified because that is the future in tech, in my opinion, and I will see you in the next one.